Hi, hola, namaskar, ciao, bonjour. Great to have you all here. I believe multiple more participants will be joining soon. Meanwhile, we start this webinar as promised on time 6.30 p.m. IST. And I'm Ruchira. I am uh, here to welcome you all on behalf of Shiminli and to introduce this session of learning in collaboration hosted and planned by Shiminli. A short introduction about myself to begin with. I'm an educator in being into this field for about 18 years now. I teach mathematics. I've headed the CBSE, the IB, and the Cambridge curricula at various stages of my career. I'm sure each one of you present here has registered for this webinar with an agenda in mind. And sharing with you my intent right now is meeting all the educators from across the globe and understanding their perspective. To begin today's session, I would like to introduce Shimin Lee to you. Shimin is a Japanese word that means citizen. Shimin Lee is an edtech platform that aims to create global citizens. Shimin Lee provides skill-based programs to both schools and individuals with a belief that students need holistic education to shape up as resilient, confident individuals who are ready to prosper in the real world. With a vision to create such future-ready citizens, Shimin Lee provides lessons to students that focus on development of skills and life skills and academic skills with professionally trained teachers from across the globe. To spread these ideas, we plan to host this and many more such webinars. And today's webinar talks about international mindedness. To me, this concept of international mindedness is a very broad concept. That means understanding and respecting other people, other cultures. However, as educators, we cannot just understand this concept on the periphery. I believe we must ensure that we delve deep into it as teachers, as learners, and to ensure our learners uh, get the essence of this concept. In this context, it is essential that we are able to connect with educators, again, as I say, from across the globe to understand their perspective, who practice this in their classroom, who practice this in their daily lives, and are able to bring it to their learners, the real essence of this concept. So we have one such educator here, Ms. Sabah Hussain. You will hear out to, from her very soon, and her experience will speak for her. However, I would like to give you a short introduction about our speaker for the day. Human knowledge is circulatory. It requires educators to inculcate the art of fluidity to transform thinking and learning landscapes. Ms. Sabah Hussain is an educator who has tried to adopt this philosophy of fluidity in her 10 years of teaching, mentoring, and facilitating. With a degree in computer science engineering, she quit the corporate world within six months to pursue her passion of being an educator. She started her career with a humble background in the Indian government school and took her desire headstrong in the world of international education. A Cambridge diploma holder in training teachers and learners, she has taught mathematics with various national and international curricula. A strong enthusiast in, in exhibiting fluidity, she teaches the theory of knowledge, interdisciplinary understanding, and has been an IB, IB examiner for several years now. She has demonstrated her leadership skills, such as IGCSE and IB MYP coordinator by taking her team to develop best pedagogical practices, thereby demonstrating scaling results in students. She strongly believes that an educational leader must be a teacher first to understand both the intricacies and the challenges that an educator faces and then provide support and guidance to the team. Pursuing her master's in international educators currently from the University of Bath, Ms. Sabah Hussain has made strong foothold in international education. person who feels most alive trekking amongst the mountains and with her students. Please welcome Ms. Sabah Hussain. The stage is yours, Sabah. Hello, good evening and hola. I am hoping uh, in different parts of the world, uh, it's good day to all of you. Um, as Thank you so much, uh, Ruchi, uh, that you have introduced me. Um, I will go ahead and actually, without further ado, start the session. Um, would you, uh, Ruchira, should I go ahead and give a few housekeeping um, <laughs> essential agreements if of I must? Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, all right. Um, so um, I think uh, you do have access to being able to unmute yourself, uh, if I must say, and please feel free to do so uh, when and where, because this is a collaborative uh, webinar where we would love to have your feedback. We would love to know more about um, you know, and it's all about discussions here. So as and when we are progressing through the course of this webinar, it would be great to discuss and understand 
uh, something more integral to international mindedness. So please feel free to unmute yourself and collaborate. Of course, you do have the chat option as well. Uh, feel free to use that also. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share. Uh, let me just. Is that on? Are you able to see Ruchira? Yes, all right, great. Okay, so before we actually start and dive into international mindedness, I would like to understand what does international mindedness actually mean to all of us who are attending here? What do you think it um, actually collaborates? What does it entail? And how do we move about understanding it further? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this Padlet link on the chat box. And I would like you all to please go ahead and put in whatever your understanding is. It's a very broad concept. And I think everything that you un uh, understand is going to be the right answer because there are no right and wrong answers here at all. So let me just go ahead and share this. on the chat box here. And I would like you to go ahead and feel free to write what your understanding is. So I'll just give two minutes where um, we can go ahead and write our understanding of international mindedness and then further discuss on this. As I am seeing here, Okay, I shall just wait. What do you know about international mindedness? What do you think is international mindedness is something that I would like you to um, ponder and write. Um, it would be great if you write your names as well and it would uh, you know, help uh, me further to be able to connect. Thank you so much, Ambali. So empathy for others is something that I see it on the Padlet here. Uh, interesting, the word use, usage of em empathy. I see Nirav has written an individual with an international outlook, embraces and respects all cultures, worldviews, and is open-minded about the shared humanity of all people. Now, I would love to know the concept of shared humanity. Now, this is something that we're going to be actually further um discussing about what exactly does shared humanity mean to contribute to the creation of a more favorable and peaceful world the individual with an international mindset engages in dialogue and collaboration okay we have international mindedness um Ambili has written collaboration between scientists students teachers accepting all cultures and respecting them okay um, Rachna says it's a mindset to respect and value every culture. The word term, the command term that I'm going to use here and I'm going to take from it is value. Do we actually consider international mindedness as values? Is it based on values? And that's something we're going to look into. It's open minded about people, respect and expect for other cultures. Okay. So I see this whole respect and being open mindedness about cultures is something that is coming through across the various understandings of international mindedness and a common periphery that I see here that I would like to um, take from this understanding is clearly we're looking at international mindedness as a philosophy. 
And that is something that we are going to actually look into and delve further through this webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for giving your inputs. And as I move on <clears throat> to discussing this further, we talk about international mindedness being a culmination of head, heart, and hands. Now, this concept that has been given by Mary Hayden and Tim Bunnell, who have our experienced researchers in the field of international education, they have come about and their research gives us an understanding about what defines head, heart, and hands. So when we talk about head, it's knowledge. We talk about knowledge and awareness of things around the world. What exactly is global? How do you understand what that is? And when we actually integrate this in academics, that's what we are talking about when we say it's head. What about heart? When we talk about heart, we're talking about the values, the attitudes that actually integrate and define international mindedness. And hands is the skills, the 21st century skills that you need to be able to integrate and imbibe to develop this whole philosophy of international mindedness. There are some researchers and um, um, international education researchers who say I international mindedness is a journey. Now, while it seems to be a very, very broad definition, it can be a journey or a pursuit to be able to actually become a global citizen. We are going to de delve into and understand what does global citizen also mean? How does it integrate with international mindedness as well? And when we talk about journey, it's also about a journey that the learner takes, not only developing himself based on awareness, knowledge, skills, but also the values and imbibing the philosophy as a lifelong learner. So, and the last, but not by no means least, is that it can be conceptualized as respect and some somebody had mentioned about empathy. When we talk about empathy, it's extremely important to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy. And these two aspects um, have to be um, consciously developed within our learners because it's very, very subtle you know, difference between the two. But yes, it makes a huge impact when a learner is able to develop this attitude of empathy rather than sympathy. So when we talk about international mindedness, we need to understand why is it important? Why is it, why there is a need or to be able to, I mean, inculcate this value, the, this philosophy of international mindedness within our learners. Now, as an educator, um, it's uh, many a times I, I come across uh, uh, educators to talking about saying that, um, well, if it is international education, then you, you, you see this terminology of international mindedness being, you know, talked about or being, you know, integrated in the academic academia or the curricula. But is it um, restricted till there? That's the question that we need to ask. It, do we need to actually go ahead and further delve into the reason, the reason behind imbibing this philosophy within our learners? International mindedness is important for the very, very fact that it helps the learners to become aware of themselves, not only as a localized human being, that they are as part of their immediate surroundings, but it also helps them to understand how they can actually affect and make an impact on others. It helps them to embrace their own culture, but then at the same time, it also helps them to open and be responsive to other cultures and views. Now, if I remember very well, um, somebody there, uh, when we were talking, uh, we we're discussing about our understanding of international mindedness, had uh, mentioned uh, an attitude about open mindedness, and that's what comes here. So, when we talk about international mindedness, there is a synonymous word that is used, which is um, sometimes also called as global citizenship. Um, anyone here who would uh, like to um, give us maybe a fair understanding or what do they understand by global citizenship? 
um, anything that you would like to put up on the chat box or you could unmute yourself and uh, just just what do you think that what does global citizenship mean okay <laughs> all right so I, uh, I I like interactive students and I would love to have interactive audience as well. So um, um, I would really enjoy that. Seeing the world as one family, that's that's a beautiful, very succinct uh, this statement made. Thank you so much, Ambali. Uh, Nija, to be responsible for their own actions, which affects the whole world, who understands the world. So. Uh, if I see this from these three statements that have been made about global citizenship, it's about the world as a whole. We are not talking about a nation. We are not talking about a tribe. We are not talking about a region per se here. When we talk about global citizenship, we are talking about a world as a whole. It's when people's self-identity, first and foremost, not as a member of a state, nation, or a tribe, but it is as a member of a human race, right? Now, when that happens, we are talking about global citizenship. And this whole aspect of global citizenship is as crucial as understanding international mindedness. So they go hand in hand. When you understand global citizenship, you understand the meaning of international mindedness very seamlessly. So moving on to our, uh, C considering what is the definition of international mindedness from the lens of IB. Because International Baccalaureate, um, for some of you who um, are coming from IB schools, um, must have actually gone through the whole concept of international mindedness as part of your curricula itself. But irrespective, it's important for us to actually delve into the whole aspect of international mindedness through the lens of IB because international baccalaureate were the first curricula who were able to actually coin this word together and give us some sort of a skeleton framework in understanding what international mindedness is. So in IB says that IB, I am international mindedness is an attitude of openness to curiosity about the world and different cultures. It is concerned with developing a deep understanding of the complexity, diversity, and motives that underpin human actions and interactions. Now, there are a lot of important words that we need to further understand, and that can only come in as we go through the slides further. Uh, Hasida, you had raised your hand, and uh, was there a question? <coughs> yes. Uh... Each and every unit, we are just uh, connecting that international mindedness and we are doing some activities in the class. That's, that's Even great. DP, yeah, DP as well as MYP. That's absolutely great. In fact, this conscious um, um, effort to be able to integrate this attitude within your academia is uh, very, very important. And I think we're going to discuss this as to how you integrate, because I'm sure as educators, you would like to know that as well a little later. So we'll come back to yeah. you then. Yeah, I'm teaching history and right. for MYP, yeah, or for MYP integrated humanities. So I'll take one, choose one topic connected with the concepts and I'll ask them to, if you are in this place, how you think and how you connect with this. And is there any awareness program you can conduct through this? If even IB always says that it is think globally and act locally. Right, locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So from this, I'm in Chennai. Our school is in Chennai. So from mm -hmm. here, what we can do? What Absolutely. global message or yeah. So, so I think we, we can time. actually go ahead and integrate some United Nations yes. sustainable goals yes, and yes, actually yes. further it, you know, converge it down to a localized problem. And yes, yeah. while you are looking at a global issue, you are converging it to a local problem within your community. And yes, that's also an aspect of international mindedness. Yes, yeah. absolutely. As, as so we take, yeah, as we take civil rights movement, mm -hmm. and we can connect it with a lot of pro uh, incidents recently what happened in US and other places. 
so we can yeah. ask the yeah ask the students to give some kind of global message to the society or to the the whole world so that's why that's we are good. connecting yeah thank you thank you asina so when we talk about international mindedness we need to understand the pillars the three pillars that actually really make sure that you have a wholesome idea of what international mindedness is so the first one is multilingualism now when we talk about multilingualism it's just not about languages or uh, you know um, uh, group 1 or group 2 that we do are aware of in ibdp and ibm yp as well where we do have language and literature we do have language acquisition as self there and yes through academia you do are able to actually connect with international mindedness but this strand or this particular aspect or pillar of international mindedness is distinct from other global education frameworks it means more than learning several languages you are reconfiguring it on how to think about languages that takes into account the complex linguistic realities of the millions of people in diverse socio cultural contexts now when you have to do this you actually integrate various texts various different um areas of media to be able to understand the cultures and bring in that intercultural diversity so here when we talk about multilingualism it's its ideal that the student that's the reason we always have adopted and i think it's not only in ib across other curricular as well this whole idea about learning another language over and above your first language is somewhere connected to this whole idea of international mindedness so when um, we move on from only english as a medium of instruction and actually take up another as a uh, language as a second language it's it's important that we actually integrate this and um, have this multilingualism and interaction between um, people who have different languages as their medium of instruction the second strand that uh, or the pillar that we need to look into is intercultural understanding now when students are encouraged to explore and engage in their with their own values and cultures and develop respect and empathy for those of others you are um, promoting intercultural understanding and this is a, an important aspect which we are going to see how that can be done as practice within the framework of our classroom and the school community as well the next important pillar is global engagement now when i'm talking about global engagement it is defined as the commitment to address the humanity's greatest 21st century challenges that we have in the classroom and beyond so when we talk about global engagement we will be looking at the service the action that we are taking as part of the community that we are in the global community that we are in and that what defines global engagement moving on to international mindedness in awareness attitude and action i would like to actually see what your responses are with these three questions because i want you to ponder over and think where do you so in the school framework that you all are in most of you are educators um i do know a few of you who uh, might be writers and librarians but yes some of you um, most of you are educators and yes i would like you to ponder over the first question where do you see international mindedness it could be explicitly um you know viewed demonstrated you have implicit demonstration of international mindedness in action in your in your school and i would like you to put this up on the padlet here so i'll just go ahead and put this in the chat box and uh, yes please there are three questions that i would like you to ponder so the uh, second one that we are looking at is as an educator how would you develop an awareness of international mindedness in your students we did hear hasina talking about her uh, methodology in terms of utilizing pedagogical practices to be able to um, imbibe the philosophy of international mindedness um what else can you do um, as an educator 
And how far are we responsible in developing an attitude of international mindedness in ourselves to impact our students? Many a times we always look into, you know, bringing in things to our students, but not needing necessarily think of first inculcating it within ourselves. Because if I always uh, believe example is better than precept, and um, if you are able to set an example to your learners, then I think that's the best way to go move forward. So how far are we responsible? How do you think we can actually go ahead and make that difference within our learners? I would like some responses and I am waiting for some interesting answers here. So I am moving on to looking at the Padlet and I see a few answers that have come in. Um, I so step one is self-awareness, knowing self and being adaptable to situations. Yes. Okay. Right. Abs this word adaptability, Ruchira, it's so important. Um, I think majority of the times, yes, students do not understand this whole idea. Yeah, true that. And once you're adaptable, you are actually, uh, you know, stepping into the shoes of uh, thinking in an international perspective. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. It's nostalgia, right, Ruchira? I, uh, uh, online classes. <laughs> true that, true that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I feel I am in an online class. Right? Class where we are requesting students, please We're switch on your cameras, please, please speak out. Yes, please speak out. Sure, exactly, exactly. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, when we talk about where do you see international, oh, right, thank you so much, Rachna. So my school plans activities like um, your mind, MUN, Generation Global, all these help in developing the international mindedness in students. Yes, MUN is a great example. Um, we conduct many sessions where students interact with students from other countries as well. Now, um, this exchange of interaction between the uh, students of different parts of the world is just an amazing uh, idea in terms of how you can bring in the philosophy of international mindedness. As a librarian, read the books like water princess girl in gambia having problems with water yes absolutely that's that's such a wonderful way to engage ourselves in uh, bringing in awareness on what are the problems that we face um, uh, i can give an example of uh, the boy who harnessed the wind um, and what a beautiful movie that is in terms of being able to understand not only the innovation that he created but yes, the problem that was being faced there. So yes, I completely agree with you, Sunita, there. Yes, the boy who won his win for fifth graders, uh, they, it was really good. Uh, and uh, there were many biographies like that, uh, which really helped. So I just put one there. Absolutely, totally agree with you. So that's, that's, that's great. I see, ah, oh, TOK, yay. I see TOK there. <laughs> so, when we do TOK in DP, the source of knowledge in various AOKs, hmm, that is extremely critical and important aspect that Ambali has mentioned. Uh, when we talk about source of knowledge, um, it's, it's always, there's a lot of perception, you know, a bias sometimes about, you know, um, that this particular area of knowledge is mostly constricted around this part of the world or has not really been explored in the other parts of the world, but no, it's not that way. And as educators, it's our responsibility to showcase to the students that yes, globally, this knowledge has been kind of, you know, integrated and amalgamated for us to be able to gain that kind of knowledge. So yes, uh, addressing issues in collaboration with other schools from different countries. Yes, uh, school assembly. Festivals, celebration, okay, all right. I am interested to know how school assembly, what is conducted in school assemblies. So Neerav, I'm, I'm going to, um, you know, just hold on to it right now. And when we come into the discussions, I would love to know more about it. 
Definitely sure. no more. Yes. Sure. So that's ah uh, okay. So I see it's only including topics which can be related to general international celebration. Yes, absolutely. Rachna mentions ah uh, so there is one answer at least I have seen because I think it's important that we first self learn. Unless and until we learn ourselves, it's not um, possible to make our learners adapt to international mindsets, right? So, Rachna, thank you so much for an answer there. I feel it is really important a teacher with an acceptance and open mind only can imbibe the skills in his or her students. Now, that's such a beautiful um, response and, and also an understanding about how important it is to be open minded. There are many times when we see that. Uh, I'll just give you an example here. So, as a mathematics teacher, I um, have students approaching through various ways a particular problem, right? Um, so, I I had a Korean student, I had a student from um, a, a European country, and I also had students from uh, our Asian countries. I'm talking about uh, India and Indonesia. Now. Um, as simple as multiplication, right? Um, you have a lot of students uh, using lattice multiplication uh, method to actually multiply. Whereas there are certain, uh, most of the students who actually go ahead and uh, attune to multiplying the way we attune to multiply, right? The regular carryover, this and that, and get your answer. Now, the whole aspect of lattice multiplication is so tuned to Japanese and Korean students because that's the way they have been uh, learning through early years. And as an educator, I have to be open minded to be able to understand their methodology and also give them room to be able to say, yes, this is also right. That is also right. And not only one way is right. So I think it's extremely important. Yes, Ruchira, you have something. To say. Yeah. So uh, if uh, another example that we can bring it into our classroom is uh, we talk of international mindedness going, accepting others ideas across the globe, but it can start from our classroom where we conduct group activities. When you talk of group activities, every student has to learn that the other person's ideas are also as important and may serve right to our discussion. So bringing that kind of discussions in the class and helping students accept each other's ideas is something that we as teachers can contribute to. Absolutely. Yes. And when we talk about contributions, I think it's, it's, it's also important for them to um, get this awareness of um, different perspectives in terms of what um, it could be something that they relate to and have a mindset or have a restricted perception of something and you actually let them open, let them ex get exposed to different, different perceptions based on different cultures. And when that happens, you are bringing in international mindedness within your classroom itself. Thank you so much for being an engaging audience here and making sure that you have put in your answers as well for us to discuss further. So when we talk about international mindedness in practice, now that is where things sometimes become a little complex, right? We, we're trying to understand how to go about doing things. So I, I always, as an educator, divide this whole uh, mechanism of being able to imbibe it within my classrooms through these three strands. For me, it's important that I am not only looking at the skills, I'm looking at the attitudes as well as the knowledge that converge together to develop this whole concept of international mindedness within my students. Now, how do I go about doing this? Through skills, of course, um, IB teachers, I'm sure you will know when I put this ATL skills, non-IB teachers, ATL means approaches to learning. Now, when we're talking about approaches to learning, there are a lot of skills that we're looking at, which are a part of 21st century skills. I'm sure we all know about 21st century skills, irrespective of whether we are IB or non-IB schools. Um, how do you amalgamate this within our classroom is something that we need to look into. So maybe just an example here. So um, we, in mathematics class, we were talking about um, area and perimeter. And I just went ahead and actually took up flags. 
And when I took up flags, I took up flags of different parts of the world. And while we, they were looking at finding the areas of the different, different cross and different things that are there, using that, um, there, there was a lot of discussion about how each flag of a particular country looks like. And how does it actually, you know, how there are geometrical figures that actually encapsulate within a particular flag. Now, using this, we are looking at critical thinking, we are looking at creativity bringing in. So these are, these are some things that we can actually adopt to be able to develop these skills. Attitudes. So when we talk about attitudes, we are looking at, uh, again, for IB uh, teach, uh, teachers and educators, you're well aware of the learner profiles, being able to imbibe these learner profiles in various different, different small areas and experiences while you are, you are teaching them actually helps them to develop to conserve this, this skill and attitude of international mindedness. So um, a school that I had been to, uh, they have this uh, concept of not locking their lockers. They just, they just don't lock their lockers. The, the, the aspect here is that they feel, they respect the space of each other. And therefore, they're absolutely sure that there is no way that there is going to be any sort of untoward incident. And they haven't had anything like this. Now, when you are able to bring this, if you see, this whole practice that they follow is very implicit. But within this practice, the learner profiles that are coming in are so integral and are promoting the concept of international mindedness uh, eventually. So ultimately, we're looking at small, very small nuances that actually bring in this attitude of international mindedness. We have IB PYP attitudes. Those of you who are in primary years program will definitely be able to relate to it. We talk about um, appreciation, uh, commitment, confidence, enthusiasm, uh, quite a few of them there. Um, I would also like you to ponder over your school's mission statement, philosophy, yeah, the school's vision and see how can you integrate the school's vision and the mission statement to be able to develop this whole idea of international mindedness. Yes, Pratisha. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, uh, I mean, just to bring to your notice, now these attitudes are no more uh, part of a PYP curriculum, but they are imbibed in learner profile itself. Yes. yes. So we now yes. don't differentiate between any differentiate IB between attitude, the two. Yeah, IB attitudes and attributes. But I mean, that's a beautiful thing towards an international mindedness. I mean, person should have something in him in our order to showcase a profile. So Absolutely. I just thought of contributing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pratisha. Yeah. The reason I brought in the attitudes within BYP while I was aware that they are a part of learner profile, because I find those attitudes very well defined. Sometimes the learner profile become very broad. Don't you agree with the, me there, Pratisha? I mean, I, I, I feel it sometimes. Of course, yes. But now if you take a look into the redefinition of it, because of course, the even the definitions have, I mean, it begins with we Change. now. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has, I mean, I think it's more uh, uh, be a part of it rather than making it broad. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's a perspective altogether. Yes, it's absolutely. A, yeah. Right. I agree with you there. So when we talk about um, moving on to the ATL skills, we talk about approaches to teaching and um, community service. So I think when we look at knowledge, the last part that is knowledge, we are bringing in global awareness, intercultural exposure. So when we talk about intercultural exposure and global awareness, I think it's, it's extremely important to bring in contextual understanding. So when you bring in contextual understanding, like in MYP, you have global contexts. Now, when you have those global contexts that you integrate within your academics, it helps the students to understand the global issue. And when they are understanding the global issue, they are able to provide uh, solutions within the local community that they identify an issue with. Now, this 
um, whole setup that you do as part of your planning helps them to build this knowledge of international mindedness. So I think in practice, what is important is to bring in these three frameworks. And when you bring these three frameworks, the practice becomes more conscious, more comprehensive to be able to imbibe these uh, values of international mindedness. When we do talk about international mindedness, um, as a coordinator, I've always uh, heard now, a lot of my uh, team members telling me there is a challenge. Sometimes there are misconceptions as well. So what I have done here is I've put up a few things and let's discuss about it. Do you think it's a misconception or do you think there is a challenge like this or nah, it's not really. So the first one, since international education, uh, I have to teach international mindedness. Do you come across this mindset? I think very often. <laughs> so, and I think this misconception that if it's an international education, it's an international curriculum, then only I actually have to teach international mindedness is something that we need to move away from. Irrespective of the curriculum that you're teaching, it's very, very important. We're talking about our students moving in the 21st century and we're looking at them building in 21st century skills, being globally aware, and as an educator, we say that we really are not here to teach international mindedness implicitly slash explicitly, then I think we are being unfair to our learners. So I think it's extremely important for us to consciously make an effort irrespective of the curricula we are. So approaches to international mindedness is a standard, is standardized for all schools. There is a set format to follow. Do you think that is true? Is there something standardized? Is there a template or do we have a set of rules and guidelines? Yes, Pratisha. So I need to type in a chat box or answer this question. Please, please go ahead and answer. Please. Okay, thank you. All right. So definitely there is no standardized set or uh, things. And I would definitely, I, I don't know, if, we ha if I have a minute, I would definitely like to take this to programs, practices, uh, standards and practices. So environment is when we actually, you know, purpose of it is in our mission and statement, how school really want to follow I am and, you know, what school believes in that sets our culture which definitely you know brings in this i am flowing into our curriculum into our classroom practices and that definitely impact teaching and learning i mean that's what i believe in so every school has a unique context and they follow or i mean their beliefs is definitely comes from their mission and vision which is of course international mindedness i think she couldn't have answered more perfectly <laughs> thank you so much pratisha uh, when she said every school's vision and mission statement decides how international mindedness flows within the school, um, she just, you know, hit the bullseye. Uh, we, we are talking about every unique school having its unique culture there and bringing in international mindedness within the framework and skeleton of the vision and mission statement that they have. So, and at no point, even IB does not um, imbibe some set standards that have to be there. They're looking at how you utilize this philosophy as a framework to be able to uniquely integrate it within your school. So thank you so much, Pratisha. You just. <laughs> All right. So that's the next one. This is an interest. I'm sorry. This is an interesting one, uh, which was. Um, uh, a part of a research where uh, this was raised by a principal of a school. Do you think this is a misconception? Do you think there is a challenge here? This to me raises the questions about the perennial debate on terminology. Because to me, international is often seen in terms of nation states as around the world, whereas global can be as much about the locality as somewhere else. The sense in which the school sees itself as global 
which can mean relationship to the local community rather than international is perhaps to reflect upon. Do you think there is this discrepancy, this misunderstanding between what defines international and what defines global? Okay. All right. So let me let me give you an example. So I I was having a discussion with one of the students who came from an, from MUN, and uh, so we were talking about um, how he was um, able to actually uh, bring in uh, an issue that was a part of his repertoire uh, during the MUN session. Um, he mentions to me. Um, Ma'am, I really do not understand this word international mindedness. Um, shouldn't it be global mindedness? I said, why so? Why do you think the word international should be moved and you should have global instead there? He said international somewhere has the word national within it. And when you say international, it somewhere still relates to a particular nation. Whereas when we talk about global, it is integrating the entire world together. So yes, there are a lot of um, you know, educators and researchers who do feel that instead of international, it should be global mindedness. But yes, this is something that um, de completely depends on your perspective to perspective. I personally feel in irrespective of whether it's international or global mindedness, the premise is the same. We are looking at building our learners to understand and empathize with others and become a better person eventually. So I think that's about it. So irrespective of what the word or terminology is. Yes, Richard. Yeah, I, I believe uh, the misconception could be thought of in a way that uh, it's an assumption that all of us do respect our people, our nation, our state kind of a thing. But when we go outside the country, when we move abroad, that is where we need to understand the other culture because it's an assumption that we are taking everybody in our state or country as ourselves. We are able to relate to them very easily. That that could be the difference that can come on when we talk about international and global. Words. Yes, yes. Uh, that is what the uh, student was also mentioning. But yes, that's, that's the thing. So it is something that is still contested upon. <laughs> Yeah, could be. But, uh, you know, once uh, we, we all start getting into this uh, shoes of knowing what international mindedness is, I think it's more about acceptance, accepting everybody else around uh, than accepting ourselves as well. So uh, that's uh, sorts the purpose there then. Absolutely. The next one. It's not a question of international mindedness. It's more a question of open-mindedness. I think international mindedness is boxing people in. Now this is from a student. <laughs> okay, so the student specifically mentions this is because uh, the student feels um, that when we talk about international mindedness, again, as it was in the previous discussion, we are restricting ourselves to a particular nation region, right? Um, or ultimately, we are um, looking at localizing. Um, however, the whole aspect of being open minded is not coming out seamlessly as it should when we talk about international mindedness. So this is something that, yes, Many a time students um, do come and discuss, um, ha have discussed with me. And I think as an educator, the reason I put this across here is it's, a, it's not a misconception, but it's a challenge for us as educators to help our learners understand that international mindedness is, um, when we talk about open mindedness, open mindedness is a subset of international mindedness. You, you need to be open-minded to be internationally minded, right? Unless and until you're not open-minded, you're not open to accepting the cultures and being aware of different cultures and having that intercultural understanding. You are not being open-minded. And if you're not open-minded, then you are 
eventually not internationally minded. So again, it's this tussle between the words and terminologies which definitely needs um, our attention um, and immediate help with the learners. The next one, it is just not enough to think international minded way. True essence of international mindedness is action. What can we do for our community to be the guardians of the world? Again, this has come from a student. This is a student who, um, while we have discussions um, during the class, so one of my class, I was actually looking at this whole um, idea about what Bangalore was in past versus present. And they were supposed to create a Venn diagram. So we're looking at Venn diagrams and uh, they were supposed to create a Venn diagram to see what there is an intersection, what there isn't within the intersections of the two sets. And uh, when we discussed further the problems and the issues that are there, which are a part of the present Bangalore, uh, yes, that's when this discussion came in. And the, during this discussion, the debate was about how are we really looking at just inter an international mindedness in a superficial manner or everything is about action and action speaks you being internationally minded so i think it's it's very it's a extremely important aspect that the student had mentioned and which i feel we as educators first should set an example so that our learners learn from those examples The next one, if it's international education, I can guarantee my child is developing international mindedness. Now, this has come from a parent. And this is a misconception majority of the parents do have. Many a times when um, you, I mean, so I, before teaching IB, I was teaching um, in a curricula which were non-IB. And you do have this um, coming up uh, where, the parents feel that they associate international mind, the, the philosophy of international mindedness coming in through international education only. While I completely acknowledge the fact that international education really gives an upper hand in terms of integrating international mindedness because the skills, the attitudes, the framework is itself um, you know, laid out so clearly there uh, it becomes very easy for the educators to actually bring in the concept of international mindedness. But no, it's not necessary that it is only through international education that we guarantee a child developing international mindedness. And as an educator, I um, personally believe, irrespective of the curricula, you can develop international mindedness through your lessons and the attitudes as well. The next one. International day, international dancing, food tasting, well, that is a good demonstration of international mindedness. Well, I personally feel this is a misconception. Um, this is just a periphery. You're just hitting the tip of the iceberg in terms of understanding international mindedness. If this is, yes, of course, these are things that we do as part of, um, you know, school's uh, calendar. But I think this, um, is not only a good way of demonstrating international mindedness. There are a lot of more comprehensive, more um, great ways to be able to demonstrate uh, international mindedness. Yes, Ruchira. Yeah, uh, I believe the background work that happens while, uh, you know, the preparation for this international day or uh, any festivals is happening, that is where students get an opportunity or a platform to develop international mindedness. The final event may not be as such, but yes, uh, if schools and teachers take it the right way in the right direction, then definitely this becomes a good platform for them. Absolutely. Yes. So as, uh, as I say, I mean, you utilize this uh, platform in terms of being able for the students to get that kind of awareness, eventually bringing in a culmination uh, in terms of a day or a festival. Yeah. Yes. All right. Coming into uh, the one here. I do think that interconnectedness, interdependence are more important than leading people to think in terms of international mindedness and global mindset. What is important is being able to relate to 
and understand other human beings and their perspectives and their point of view. And I couldn't agree more with this because ultimately, if we are looking at international mindedness, uh, it's extremely important for our students to be able to relate to and understand other human beings. And how do we go about doing this? It's through the whole idea that the student mentioned is about action. Now, there are various avenues that you have. You have community service in MYP, you have CAS in um, DP, irrespective of whichever curricula that you are actually looking at. Um, providing opportunities for students to be able to reach out to the community, different strata of the community helps in gauging international minds. With this, I will, Ruchira, I will. <laughs> open the floor for more questions and interaction. I am a big fan of Calvin, so I would like you to be open as Calvin is and bring in your questions and interactions. Yes, teachers, we can be more of teachers now than students and come up to the discussions. <laughs> Any questions, any ideas where you feel that, uh, you know, you've done your bit to bring in international mindedness into your classrooms, or you've been able to make a change to a single child's life, his thought process. I, I think every step makes a difference. That is where if you could share your ideas, I'm sure another 10, 15 of us who are sitting here will be able to, you know, bring that change into our students' lives somewhere or the other. I think, um, okay, I, I'll just go ahead and, you know, um, give another example that, um, you know, we had in our previous school as well. So one of the schools um, um, ha has a, uh, is a residential school and uh, you have a lot of Korean students there as well. So uh, Korean uh, Independence Day, as well as Indian Independence Day falls on the same day. And uh, so as, it's it's explicitly celebrated uh, for both, and uh, this amalgamation and bringing the cultures together, uh, where you have the Korean national anthem as well as the Indian national anthem being played, um, bring in brings in this whole idea of international mindedness so beautifully, and um, the educators and the learners when they actually uh, are witness to it, um, feel. Uh, this whole, uh, not only patriotism for their own country, but also respect for the other country. Such a beautiful example, Sabha, I must say. Anyone else uh, who would want to share anything or has any kind of questions, thoughts pondering over your head? Uh, yeah, good evening. Can I? Hi, Ambali. Ambali. Yes, please, yeah. please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, I was just looking at the uh, the cartoon which you're showing there i mean the kid is actually only concerned about a high paying job right uh it, what however hard you try in a class uh most of the times i'm especially talking about IB children or maybe a level children their only concern is how much will i be paid after i come i i get a job uh, and how much how much can i earn if i go out of this country and probably go abroad that's basically their concern so even even if you try really hard to bring in obviously they do have international mindedness and global mindset and everything but their ultimate concern is how much will i be paid and uh, also thinking that um, maybe if we remain in this country there is no future for us uh, could you do you think uh, we can do something about this as well not not staying back or something like that but at least to uh, change that kind of an attitude where children also see um, things from Another perspective where uh, it's not only about minting money, but there are also other factors which you can learn when you go to another country. Okay, so um, I com uh, I completely uh, understand, Ambali, that yes, this is something that um, is a very common occurrence uh, within yes. uh, majorly in DP uh, or you know in eleventh and twelfth graders, right? Yes, I, I, yes, I assume. Yes. We are looking at uh, those set of uh, yes, age yes, group. Absolutely. 
Now, um, so I had a, a cohort of students who very naughty, of course, but then ultimately, uh, when I brought in a concept that I kind of I was connecting it with international mindedness, they did mention something about, come on, ma'am, ultimately, we're looking at, uh, yeah, uh, getting jobs, getting into the university and things like that. Um, I, I had to do something to be able to change their mindset. So I called up one of my ex students uh, who was in Spain, who she is in Spain and uh, uh, to bring in this idea of how important it is for you to imbibe the values of international mindedness to be able to survive in the universities you move into in abroad. So um, I actually went ahead and uh, asked her to come in for uh, a session. Um, we just had a very, very candid discussion where she actually shared how the people there in Spain um, respected her they were open to her in terms of being able to um, transition from India to Spain and how it was an integral part of her uh, mindset as well to be able to adapt. Now, unless and until hadn't she been able to understand this philosophy altogether, uh, for her being in that university would have been very difficult. She might have actually come back saying, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, these yeah, are yeah. these are the things that, you know, when and when we as educators say it is not really taken um, as a saint's word when you have your mm -hmm. ex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. alumni yeah. coming and yes. talking. Yes. Right? Absolutely. We have alumni talk. Um, and yeah, obviously, they also bring in this aspect that when you go, you have to get adapted to a place and how, how should you be behaving there and for for you to get accepted there uh, but for i don't know if it's a problem with the generation but this question is always as perennial as as it is so how much do we get paid and how 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 can we go i mean how can we escape from this place as early as possible <laughs> I think I think as an educator, we it's our duty to consciously just keep trying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And as much as we try from an early age, I think that reflects in when they moved into their university lives very clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true that. Okay, great. Okay, so I think uh, Sabha, you have anything else to add on? I think I am uh, done here, unless and until we have any more questions or anything that the audience wants me to discuss. Sure, audience, if there's anything, otherwise uh, I am posting a feedback link on the chat box. We would really like to hear from you about the session and what are the further sessions that you would want to, you know, have certain topics that you would want to have sessions on. So kindly fill in the feedback form at your convenience. And uh, at this point, I would like to thank Sabha for sharing such beautiful insights and for such a wonderful session. And we look forward to many more such sessions uh, with you and with other educators that we have on board today, uh, where we align ourselves to the concept of futuristic education and how do we, you know, uh, build that since childhood, since the early years that uh, align to the mission of creating global citizens. And uh, uh, another thing that I would li like to point out right now is uh, Shimon Lee is on this mission of creating global citizens and would like to support each and every educator into their classroom on how to bring life skills into their class. Uh, there are demo sessions that Shimon Lee organizes and if you wish to connect with us at any point of time, please do write to us at uh, collaborate at .com. The, I, uh, the ID is on the screen. You would also receive a recording of this session and the feedback uh, form once again on your email IDs. We would love to get in touch with you uh, at various points, um, you know, to discuss such important topics and uh, keep learning from each other. Thank you so much for being such wonderful and participative audience. Thank you once again, Sabah, for so much. sharing out time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And yes, last one the statement. As an educator, we should just consciously keep trying <laughs> and the rest will take its due course. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, okay, thanks everyone. We'll end the session here. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.